In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about derivatives and rates of change. So we want to start with recalling some of the ideas that we first talked about um, in section 2.1. Remember that we talked about um, the problem of finding the slope of the tangent line to a curve, y equals f of x, at some point p. And we said that we compute the slope um, in order, excuse me, to compute the slope of the tangent line, we look at computing the slope of the secant line through points P and Q. So if I have some function like this, let's say it looks like this, and I want to know what the slope of the tangent line to some point A is, I picked some point X that was near A and called that point Q, and it had coordinates X comma F of X, and I had this point P here that had coordinates a comma f of a, and I looked at finding the slope of that secant line for points q that got closer and closer to p. In other words, for x values that got closer and closer to a. So we looked at this pq slope, which was our rise over run, so it was the difference in our y values. It was f of x minus f of a over the difference in the x values, x minus a. And when we computed this for um, many different x values as we got closer and closer to a, what we were really doing was looking at a limit. So we have this definition that the slope of our tangent line to the function f at a is the following. m is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a, provided this limit exists. Okay. Um, we also showed that we could think about um, h as being this little distance here, and that what we were doing was really taking that distance between um, x and a to be smaller and smaller and smaller. So we could also think about this as a limit as h goes to zero, as that distance goes to zero, of f of a plus a little bit, minus f of a all over h. And what we're going to see is that what we have right here is the definition of the derivative. So the derivative is this, um, this kind of limit that's interested in finding um, the slope of a tangent line. So this is the definition of um, derivative at a point a. Okay, so what we're talking about in this lecture is going back to this problem of the tangent line and the problem of, in, of um, instantaneous velocities and looking at answering questions um, about those problems using limits. So let's look at um, an example where I want to find the equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals 1 over the square root of x at the point 4 comma 1 half. So if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, I need to find the slope of that tangent line. So to find the slope of that tangent line, I'm going to use this definition that we had here. I'm going to want to look at this limit as h goes to 0 of the slopes of my secant lines, which I can write as this f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So my slope is this limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, where this is my function, and 4 is my a in this example. So I'm looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over, so this is going to be my function now, evaluated at a plus h. So in other words, evaluated at 4 plus h and subtracting f of 4. So I've got 1 over the square root of 4 plus h minus 1 over the square root of 4 all over h. So now you may recognize this, this limit as one that maybe you had to practice doing in section 2.3 and that was really um, practicing a limit that, that is of this form so that we could um, more easily see how to do that when we got to a problem where this came up as being the way of computing this um, the slope of the tangent line. So looking at this, I have to think about what kind of technique I need to use. Well, I can simplify this and make that 2. And then I'm going to have the difference of these two fractions. So I'm going to want to use the technique where I get a common denominator. So I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0 here 
go ahead and simplify that to be 2. So if I want a common denominator, I'm going to have to multiply this first fraction by um, 2 over 2, and the second fraction by the square root of 4 plus h over the square root of 4 plus h. So we're going to have 2 all over 2 times the square root of 4 plus h. Um, let me see. I want to write this in the in steps. Okay, so I'm going to have, um, let's see, 2 over 2 times the square root of 4 plus h minus the square root of 4 plus h all over 2 times the square root of 4 plus h. And this is all over h. Okay, so I see I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 minus the square root of 4 plus h all over 2 times the square root of 4 plus h. Okay, so now that we have a common denominator. And since this fraction is all divided by h, it's like being divided by h over 1, so this is times 1 over h. So now I want to think about what technique I need to use next, because this particular problem is going to involve um, multiple algebraic techniques. So I see that I've got this difference of 2 and the square root of 4 plus h, so a good thing to um, do next would be to multiply by the conjugate here. So I've got the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 minus the square root of 4 plus h all over this 2h, the square root of 4 plus h. And we're multiplying this by 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h all over 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h. Okay, so this is going to give us the limit as h goes to 0 of, let's see, 4. Um, we're going to not have the middle term, and then it will be minus the quantity 4 plus h. Remember that this negative sign here is getting distributed, and we need to think about this 4 plus h as being um, in parentheses, so I'll remember that that negative applies to the 4 and to the h. And now this is all over 2h, the square root of 4 plus h, times this quantity 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h. So we've got to simplify this a little bit, limit as h goes to 0. 4 minus 4 is going to be 0, so I'm going to have just a negative h in my numerator. Okay. Let's see, over 2h, square root of 4 plus h, 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h. Okay, so we dealt with fractions here. We multiplied by the conjugate. And the next thing that we have to do is a bit of factoring, or at least a bit of canceling here. It's already nicely factored for us. We need to cancel these um, h's so that we can see this is the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 all over 2 times the square root of 4 plus h times this quantity 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h. Okay, so now we're pretty much to the point where we can actually figure out what this limit is. So let's continue here. I've got this limit as h goes to 0, just rewrite it a little bigger for us, 2 times the square root of 4 plus h times 2 plus, the, let's see, yeah, square root of 4 plus h again, all right. So I see I can plug in 0 where all these h's are because that's not going to give me a 0 in the denominator anymore. So um, 4 plus h where h is 0 is just going to be 0 there, the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to have 2 times 2. And in parentheses, I should have 2 plus 2. So I see that this is going to be 4 times 4 in the denominator. So I have negative 1 over 16 is the value of the slope of the tangent line um, to this curve at the point 4 comma 1 half. So if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, I need to use this slope. So our slope is this, and I have my point 4 comma 1 half, making the tangent line, equation of our tangent line, have the following form. Okay, so we're going to have y minus y1 equals m times x minus our x1. So this is the equation of our tangent line. So notice that this problem brought together um, what we were doing in 2.1. Now we're coming back to that and saying when we just had this idea of getting closer and closer using these tables as a way of getting um, the, the slope of the tangent line, now we can actually do the limit computation um, using all these algebraic techniques that we've learned. 
Okay. So we also want to connect back now to the um, velocity problem, which we remember was connected to the problem of finding um, instantaneous velocity, excuse me, instantaneous velocity and the slope of the tangent line were connected problems. So let's just review um, how the velocity problem works. Um, suppose that we've got an object that moves along a straight line according to some position function given by s equals f of t, where s represents displacement or directed distance um, of our object from its starting point at time t. Then we can compute average velocity over a small time interval here from a to a plus h by looking at displacement divided by time. And we can compute displacement by looking at um, the position at the end of the interval at a plus h minus the position at the beginning of the interval at a divided by the total time elapsed um, over that interval. So notice that again this is the same as the slope of the secant line. over that interval. And we can then compute um, instantaneous velocity like we did back in 2.1 by looking at this um, time interval here getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So as the, the length of the interval gets smaller and smaller, what we're looking at is a limit as h goes to zero of this f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So when we have a question about instantaneous velocity, we're being asked to look at this limit um, the same limit that we would look at. So it's the same limit as for um, finding the slope of the tangent line at A. Okay, and both of um, these problems are um, equivalent to the derivative of the function at a. And we're going to be talking more about the definition of the derivative next time. So for our last example, let's just see how we can um, use this limit computation to answer a question about instantaneous velocity. So in our last example, we're looking at a problem where we have a ball that's thrown into the air with a velocity of 60 feet per second, and the height of the ball after t seconds is given by s equals 60t minus 16t squared. And we're interested in finding the velocity of, oops, I changed this problem before. This is the velocity of the ball after three seconds. So we're looking for instantaneous velocity. And the method that we have for doing that at the moment is by looking for um, the limit. So we need to look at finding the velocity after three seconds using this formula that we have here. So we want to compute the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h. Now a plus h for us here is three plus h. So we're looking at our function s here evaluated at 3 plus h minus the value of our function at 3 all over h. So we're going to be looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of 60 times 3 plus h minus 16 times 3 plus h squared minus, and this is where we really need to remember to use parentheses because I'm going to need to make sure that this minus sign gets distributed over the multiple terms that I'm going to have in here. So I'm going to have, let's see, when I plug in a number I guess I won't have multiple terms, but a lot of times we do need to be careful about that. So this is going to be 60 times 3 minus 16 times 3 squared. Okay, and this is all over h. So now we need to do a bunch of algebra to try to solve this limit. So this was as h goes to 0. So I'm going to have 180 plus 60h minus 16 times this 3 plus h squared. Um, let's see, then I'm going to have minus 180 plus 16 times 9. And I'm leaving it like that instead of doing the arithmetic because I already see that I can cancel negative 180 with this 180 up here. So it was a little bit easier for me to do the arithmetic by not um, combining these initially. So now I still have a little bit more algebra to do. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 60h minus 16 times 9 
plus 6h plus h squared, when we just multiply that out, then I still have this plus 16 times 9 all over h. Continue here, limit as h goes to 0. I've got 60h minus 16 times 9 minus 16 times 6h minus 16h squared plus 16 times 9 all over h. So we're seeing that this um, section is giving us also an opportunity to practice more with the techniques that are involved in computing limits. So we get some cancellation here and now I say I'm going to have to factor um, in my next. Okay, So we can continue here. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0 and now I see what I want to do next is factor. So this problem involved techniques that were a combination of expanding canceling and then factoring. So I want to factor out an h, so I've got h times 60 minus 16 times 6 minus 16 h all over h. So these h's cancel and I've got the limit as h goes to 0 of 60 minus 16 times 6 minus 16h. So I see that when I plug in 0 here, direct substitution is going to work, I'm going to just get 16, excuse me, 60 minus 16 times 6, which ends up giving me negative 36. So to answer the question here, what is the velocity of the um, this ball after 3 seconds, I have the velocity after 3 seconds is negative 36 feet per second, indicating that the velocity of the ball is in a downward direction. Okay, so um, we're going to just be talking more about this limit definition of the derivative and its connections to other types of rates of change um, besides velocity um, next time. So please let me know if you have any questions.